the new technologies which are now coming into the field of diabetes management. According to you, you know, because you, your company is essentially involved in uh, insulin pens, at least in India. So, how much you know, new technologies are helping, according to you? Well, <clears throat> there would be many new technologies um, uh, which are coming in and diabetes is a chronic disease and uh, uh, you know, as as the uh, disease management, <coughs> sorry. So uh, diabetes, as I said, is a chronic disease, and as the disease management is uh, moving more and more towards uh, talking about patient empowerment and how patients can start managing the disease on the on their own, lots and lots of new technologies are coming in, and these new technologies could be very varied. They could be technologies which would be talking about blood glucose monitoring. They could be technologies which are talking about insulin delivery. Um, there could be technologies which are like uh, on continuous glucose monitoring. There could be technologies which, which are trying to make insulin a little bit more stable. So there's a whole lot of work which is going around um, in the field of technology uh, in the management of diabetes. Uh, Mr. Aibar, are you really happy with the research that is going on in diabetes? Uh, research, uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of research which is going on in diabetes. Uh, the research is um, a sort of incremental in nature as we see it. It's not something which is extremely disruptive in nature, uh, what we used to see in the earlier times. And when I say that the research is a little bit more incremental in nature in the sense that whatever is available today, uh, the newer and newer technologies, the newer and newer research which is available today is 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 uh, making the life of the diabetic a little bit more comfortable. There is a research which is going on on two fronts basically. Um, there is a research which is going on in trying to find out new therapeutic options to manage diabetics better. And the other front on which there is a lot of research which is going on is on technologies uh, in, in trying to get better blood glucose monitoring devices, in get, trying to get better insulin delivery devices, uh, in trying to um, in, in trying to get let's say uh, e-platforms uh, to counsel patients better and to touch base with patients better. So there is a research which is going out on an ongoing basis on these three parameters predominantly. And I would say that yes, uh, diabetes um, being one of the major lifestyle diseases in addition to cardiovasculars, mm -hmm. um, the amount of research which is going on is huge and uh, it's, it's really exciting as we move forward. When you compare with markets uh, abroad as well as in India, how different are the markets, uh, you know, probably in the developed world, how different are diabetics in the developed world and how do companies like uh, Sanofi deal with uh, that kind of situation, the difference in the markets? Uh, if you look at the diabetic person per se, or the diabetic patient per se, I, I would say that uh, the diabetic patients all across the world are the same. Uh, in the sense that um, uh, all patients need uh, to take uh, their medication on time, all patients need uh, regular uh, counseling in terms of diet and in terms of exercise, uh, uh, and, and adherence or non-adherence to therapy uh, is the same. Uh, there are There is in the life of a diabetic person uh, the need for insulin at some point in time. Uh, so I think that the diabetic person uh, in India and in and globally is is largely the same, and they have the same sets of problems. As far as pharmaceutical companies, as far as caregivers, and as far as infrastructure is concerned, I think except for the infrastructure part, uh, where in the developed world the infrastructure is a little bit more more sturdy and and is is is, is a little bit more uh, developed, so to say. Um, uh, the other 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 parts of the uh, story they remain the same in the sense that clinical parameters and clinical management is as good as in, uh, as it is all over the world. We have almost every single medication to manage diabetes available globally, also available in India. Uh, so as far as the scenario is concerned, except for the infrastructure, perhaps the rest of the things are largely the same. Side is uh, uh, you know. India is very soon, or probably if it has not already become the diabetes capital of the world, uh, people have several reasons for it. You know? I mean, the number of reasons are increasing every day for the diabetes becoming an epidemic in this country. In your reading, having been in this business of management of diabetes and meeting people on the ground with such kind of disorders, what is your you know, reading into the situation? How, what do you think, why do you think is diabetes becoming is it only because of lifestyle or is it because of some other reasons also? Um, 
Two basic reasons. I would say that yes, um, as you mentioned, lifestyle is one of the fundamental reasons um, uh, why people are, uh, um, uh, why Indians are more getting more and more prone uh, uh, to to be diabetics. And um, we have approximately 66 million diabetics now uh, in our country. Uh, so lifestyle does play a very, very important role and lifestyles have undergone a phenomenal amount of change uh, in India. The Indian genotype in itself, the way we guys are made, uh, is what we call as a thrifty genotype in the sense that if we eat, uh, we need to work a lot to sort of burn out what we eat. And uh, this is what our forefathers uh, used to do. Uh, and and as, as, as we always say that, um, you know, maybe 30 years ago or maybe 40 years ago, um, we used to travel or we used to walk for about four kilometers uh, to eat, to get our meals done. And uh, today you have to walk for four kilometers to digest what you are eating. That's the type of a, a phenomenal change in the lifestyle which, uh, which has happened in, in a span of two or three decades. And uh, when within such a short span of time, if uh, there is such a fundamental shift in the lifestyle, then our own genetic makeup is, is, is not uh, willing to keep pace uh, with this change. And this leads to a significant amount of increase in diabetes. Uh, the second important reason is that Indians per se are, are having a lot of subcutaneous fat. Uh, and, uh, and and that's the biological part uh, uh, which, which is again there uh, in, in our genes. Um, lots and lots of more people are getting detected faster and faster because of a little bit of an improvement in infrastructure which is also pushing up the numbers of diabetics uh, in our country. So I think that there are uh, two or three very, very fundamental factors why the number of diabetics are going up and uh, a large part of it is certainly being contributed uh, to or could be attributed rather to the lifestyle changes. Sir, as you have mentioned a very important aspect of thrifty genes which essentially would mean that prosperity is the reason for diabetes become, I mean, India becoming the diabetes capital. Is it the prosperity which is essentially the reason for it? Um, I, I would not say that uh, prosperity is one of the fundamental reasons. It's always good to be prosperous, uh, but uh, I would say that it's living with prosperity is, is something which uh, uh, we have not been able to reconcile uh, in the sense that uh, we, 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 if we would have had a little bit of a more balanced diet and if we would have continued to exercise the way we would have exercised, um, I, I, I think that we could have still but, uh, uh, sort of managed the situation. Is, uh, there is also another aspect of it that thrifty uh, genes also means that you should be surviving with lesser food. That's the whole idea behind thrifty genes. Yes. So does that, doesn't it mean that because most of us are able to get no, three meals a day. Yes. And that is that could be the reason for Yes, it. certainly, certainly. That that is one of the uh, main contributing factors in the sense that it's just not getting the three meals of the day. Uh, it's also the type of food which you are eating, and and there is a lot of easy availability of food. There is a lot of fatty food which we eat. Uh, a lot of unhealthful diet which we eat. I think this is what is contributing uh, uh, to to the uh, entire uh, diabetes. This is what is contributing to obesity. And uh, it is a proven fact that obesity is one of the most important or the most predominant risk factors uh, in case of diabetes. So I think um, lots of food, uh, lots of not so good food and less of uh, exercise is, is what is uh, sort of precipitating uh, uh, this uh, fundamental epidemic of diabetes. How much do you think is non-compliance reason for uh, diabetes getting worse in people, especially when it comes to related disorders of nephro nephropathy or neuropathy? Um, when we talk about compliance, essentially we are talking about how are you going to, uh, how frequently or how correctly you take your medication and uh, how well you control your diet and exercise. Um, uh, and, and we just spoke a little while ago uh, comparing the Indian scenario versus the global scenario in terms of compliance. Uh, I think that patients are the same all over. And uh, non-compliance leads to complications and in case of diabetes, high blood glucose per se in your body doesn't make any difference. It is the complications which arise of the high blood glucose which is, which, which is uh, basically affecting other organs. which is basically affecting the other organs. So you treat diabetes uh, to manage blood glucose levels in the short term, but in the long term, the basic management of diabetes is to manage and reduce complications. 
In your understanding, has it happened that you know many people who are diabetic for very long periods, for instance, 15 to 20 years, obviously will have an organ failure? Uh, not necessarily. It, it ultimately. I'm asking you about the market thing. Now, a doctor might be able to answer that, but as a, as you study the market so closely, and you have so many surveys going on, you know, actually people on the ground reporting to you, telling you where to sell, what is the demand for a particular insulin. From that understanding, what is the reading of uh, you know? Yeah. Long yeah, uh, in terms of uh, long-term diabetic uh, um, will always get some complication or the other. In fact, it's a proven fact that 50% of diabetics have cardiovascular diseases. And um, there is enough and more evidence to talk about it. Uh, for example, Dr. Stephen Hafner, maybe three decades ago, has clearly stated what is called as a common soil hypothesis, in which he clearly mentions that if you are a diabetic or if you have got insulin resistance, um, this is going to lead to macrovascular complications. If your blood glucose is not controlled very well, it might lead to microvascular complications like retinopathy or nephropathy. So certainly high blood glucose levels uh, will lead to microvascular complications. Uh, a high amount of insulin resistance will certainly lead to macrovascular complications. So it is a known fact that people who have been diabetic for a long time and particularly those who are not very well controlled would get complications at some point in time or the other. And you also see when uh, you are selling uh, the diabetes and the, and the insulin pens that uh, the type 1, the number of people getting type 1, contracting type 1 di diabetes as well as type 2 young people are increasing in a very alarming rate. Um. Type 1 and type 2 are two different stories. Um, uh, uh, type 1, uh, the etiology of why a person gets type 1 or juvenile diabetes is something which is completely different. Genetic factors, they need insulin right from the word go. Um, diabetes type 2 uh, was earlier detected at the age of 35, 40 plus. Uh, today with the change in the lifestyle and this lifestyle changes right from you know from 20 years to 60 years this change in lifestyle has actually resulted in the newer diabetic patients or newer fresh diabetic cases being detected at a lesser age so it's 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 not very uh, surprising these days to see that you might find up uh, find getting a newly detected diabetic uh, type 2 diabetic uh, about, of about 25 to 30 years as well so there are patients who are very, very young who now start getting type 2 diabetes as well. And the type 2 also now depend on insulin. Uh, they start, slowly start to depend on insulin, insulin shots. The management of type 2 is actually a continuum in the sense that um, a, broadly speaking type 2 diabetes the fundamental thing at the base of the pyramid is diet and exercise. So any type 2 diabetic has to have a whole lot of control on diet and has to exercise vigorously. Generally type 2 diabetics will start off on oral medication and uh, they would uh, be on oral medication for seven, 7 years, 8 years. And uh, after they have been on an optimal dose of the oral medication, and if their HbA1c, which is the which is the control parameter uh, uh, for glycemic control or for blood glucose control, if that HbA1c does not come under control, if the HbA1c is more than 8.5, for example, uh, then it is advisable to sort of start on insulin. What is your uh, optimal level of uh, glycosylated hemoglobin? The you mean for a non-diabetic individual? No. Uh, diabetic who is testing it and whose number should be? A diabetic, diabetic uh, all guidelines would inch, uh, would uh, would sort of mandate that the A1C should be around 7 or the A1, HbA1C should be under 7 and uh, that should be the optimum level and the and since you asked it the non-diabetic individuals the uh, A1C levels are 5.4 so for a diabetic if he is well controlled or if, if she is well controlled the A1C has to be under 7. Okay. No, I was asking about your personal opinion. Is it any different from the standard? Do you feel that? No, it is a standard. Uh, the HbA1c under 7 is the mandated standard, uh, which is the you American standard. I, I do believe. I do believe uh, it is the same. Tell us, you know, there are so many insulin pens available all over the world of various companies. What is the USP of your product? We have this very unique product called as the All Star Pen, uh, and uh, uh, this All Star Pen is a pen which uh, we have launched exactly a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, the all the unique thing about this All Star Pen is that um, 
we felt when we spoke to various stakeholders, whether it be patients, whether it be doctors, whether it be caregivers, that there is a need in India for a device which is a fair price device, and I'm not saying a low cost device, but I'm using the term as a fair price device. <clears throat> And uh, and this this device actually has to be a device um, which uh, uh, which which will which will sort of satisfy the need of the Indian patients. So before we started making the All Star Pen, we actually did a whole lot of market research on what the Indian patients, what the Indian physicians actually need. And once uh, this target profile, the target product profile uh, was very clear in our mind. This is where we started building the All-Star ground up. Um, the All-Star, as I said, is a product which has been made in India by for Indian patients. But mind you, uh, this All-Star is an effort which is the effort uh, which has spanned five continents and uh, there are multi-stakeholders who are involved in uh, the making of the All-Star. Of course, we in the India team there is our Frankfurt team which is involved. There is a whole lot of um, uh, components of All Star which are manufactured in Taiwan. Um, there, there are lots of stability tests which has been done, the accuracy test which has been done in the All Star globally. So the All Star is an effort which is spanning across five continents, and the result is that we have one of the one of the best products uh, in pen all over the world.